Good evening. I hereby call the Brockton City Council ordinance meeting for Wednesday, August 9th at 6 p.m. to order. I recognize a quorum. Um, the ordinance committee is made up of Councilor Lally, Councilor Fowell, Councilor Rodriguez, Councilor Minicello, who is unable to attend this evening. He had a personal commitment and uh, myself, Shirley Azak. Um, good evening and our agenda, item number one, Madam Clerk. Number one, ordinance, an ordinance amending Appendix C, Zoning, Article 3, General Regulations and Permitted Modifications in the Building Height, Maximum Standards for Residential R3 and R4, Commercial and Industrial Zones, to increase the maximum building heights in these selected zones. Invited to attend, Jack Lally, Ward 6 Counselor, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development, Deputy Chief Edward R. Williams, Jr., James Pluff, Inspector of Buildings, Superintendent, tenant of buildings, assistant city solicitor Aileen Bartlett or designee of the law department. Thank you. Um, I did receive an email. Deputy Chief Williams will not be here this evening as well as uh, assistant city solicitor Aileen Bartlett. Um, and this item was postponed from last month. Councilor Lally. Hello, fellow commissioners, or, uh, board members. Um, Jim Plus is just running up. He's going to go get the building heights so we can make that amendment. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, he did attach a whole selection of, of documentation uh, along with a little cheat sheet of what is where, highlighting some of the particular uh, items that the committee expressed concern about last time. Uh, you know, certain zones that were under discussion in their proximity to R1 or R2 zones. So I don't know if you've had a chance to really flip through, um, but that's where, that's where we'd be looking at. Um, I know that we didn't have a chance to hear from Mr. Director May. May. Uh, I can pass it over to him if the committee is so interested. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. May, did you want to speak on this item? <coughs> Good evening, Councillors. Um, I believe you have received um, two memos from me via email. Um, and I just wanted to reiterate that for the most part, building height does not have much effect on residential development in an R3 or an R4 zone. It's, it's mostly constrained by uh, the lot area requirement and the parking requirement. Um, and I did share some information with Councillor Lally this afternoon, uh, or this morning, about unintended consequences, where we have um, a lot of our historic homes uh, from the old shoe barons are in, the, um, in an R3 district. And to up the uh, height of those buildings would potentially encourage the demolition of a, of a historic property and the construction of a, in this case, six-story building. Um, there are other instances in, in R3 districts where you have a single family home and somebody may want to build a seven story single family home. It's strange, but we have seen stranger things here in Brockton. Um, so there's some unintended consequences and I thought it would be helpful to say uh, and, and the same with the C1 districts because they're usually, it's a very small neighborhood retail um, district and probably shouldn't be raised. But all the C, uh, the rest of the C's and the I's I thought were perfectly um, fine. Because you're just really going up a floor for those. The other issue, and I, I think that there's been a text amendment um, by losing um, the feet in the you know, 60, six stories or 60 feet. Um, that's an important um, qualifier that, that should be incorporated back into the amendment as you, as you all make it. And then lastly, um, I did comment about um, industrial structures. Um, and that is, of course is, is something up for um, a larger discussion, but I'm working with a um, a, a company who is interested in moving to Brockton, but because of their industrial process, they need a much taller um, silo 
where they store their uh, finished product and um, it would exceed the 60 feet uh, height limit for a structure in an industrial zone. Um, my thought was if, if we're changing heights, if we could make a special permit for, uh, ex, uh, for structures, it would need to be reviewed by the zoning board and by the planning board before being um, allowed. Uh, well, allowed by the zoning board and then um, cited by the planning board. This would give the uh, community two chances to um, discuss um, and uh, potentially object to any project moving forward, um, but as opposed to um, issuing a variance, which could be challenged in, in court um, and drag a process um, or extend the uh, development time of a process. We all have seen uh, just recently with um, Joffrey Anatole's project um, where it, a variance was issued. Um, he had to spend a, almost a year and a half in court to try to get this thing settled. And we think that it would be easier to um, change the zoning to fit the businesses and the development where we want it as opposed to um, making people have to go through the uh, variance process. And Mr. May, would you suggest this would be done here as part of this, or are you suggesting it would be something separate, a separate ordinance? I'm not sure how it would be handled. Um, you are working with this particular section. Um, I don't know, I would think it could be made as a uh, floor amendment, but I'm not a lawyer. Uh, Attorney Resnick, what would you recommend? If it's on this section, you can do a floor amendment. So what would the, maybe we can work with an amendment, uh, putting together maybe wording so we can get that in here. Did you want to work on that, Council Lally? I can work that with that, Council Lally. The, um, the memo I me? sent had suggested 130 feet um, as a special permit, so anything between 61 and, and 130 would need a special permit. Okay. And I return the floor to Mr. Lally. Thank you, Director. Uh, yeah, to take it a, a way back, um, the, the Director and I did talk earlier today about uh, R3, R4, and C1. Um, and, you know, we, we did talk about how we, you know, we don't want to inadvertently put uh, some of the historic properties in, in a bad place. And, you know, I, some of the convenience stores, we don't want to leave a, a door open with that. So, um, Will you be I, making amendments or? Yeah, I, I, I'll make an amendment um, both to add the actual height in feet to what is being discussed uh, and to leave the stories where they are for R3, R4, and C1 with the important provision that all three zones are still eligible for a special permit. So if somebody actively chooses to try and build on one of those zones and they want to build higher, they can get a special permit. They're just going to get, have to get a special permit from a lower story height. And so they're gonna have more ground to cover if they want to build up. Um, but I'd rather do that than put some of our older, uh, you know, historically valuable houses at risk or alternatively, you know, put a neighborhood convenience store in a, in a strange position. Because I, I think that goes to, you know, the unintended consequences that we expressed wariness of at the beginning. Um, if somebody wants to make a, uh, a motion and amend this to include Director May's uh, other suggestion, I would have no problem with that. Uh, you know, any kind of friendly amendment. But I, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep my part of it to where it is. Okay. Um, if anyone else has anything, I'll take it, but otherwise I'll make my motion. Um, I just, Council, do you have any? Questions? Just, uh, <clears throat> I think I understand. Leave R1C, I strike that. Uh, leave R3 and R4 as they are, however, allow a special permit? Yes. Uh, but, but the special permit would only be to go from 61 feet to 130, not open-ended, correct? 
No, the their special permit is the same as everyone else's. Okay. So, so their their special permit, the special permit for all of them stays the same. Okay. Uh, the only thing is, so if you wanted to build a in an eight-story building in an industrial zone, if this passes, mm -hmm. and you can go up to six stories, so you need a special permit to go to eight, and then you're in an R3 zone and you want to build an eight-story apartment building, you would have to go for the same special permit. Okay. That would be that would be the particular case. I think the height limit on a special permit is what Mr. May is referencing for uh, the uh, amendment that he suggested. If, if I may, and, and in the industrial zoning, um, there are specific heights for buildings, accessory buildings, and structures. So those are three different categories. And so I'm particularly looking at structure. So that. It includes things like um, uh, uh, elevators, uh, grain elevators, uh, silos, um, things that are used in the in in the processing that stand separate from the building, or are adjacent to the building but not part of the building, which is the structure means that it's it's not habitable. Okay. Madam Chair, would you? Uh would you entertain a brief recess so that we can make sure we have this worded properly by uh, Attorney Resnick, and then we can we can make the motions to uh, to insert the appropriate language? Sounds great. So we're going to take a brief recess. Thank you. We're resuming from a brief recess. Councilor Lally. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to restore uh, R3, R4, and C1 to their original language. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to restore R3 and R4 to their original uh, status. All those in favor? All those opposed? That amendment carries. Thank you, colleagues. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a second motion uh, to add under six stories underneath C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. I1, I2, and I3 underneath six stories to add uh, the words 60 feet. Do we have a second, Council? Second. A motion has been made and properly or, uh, Sorry, or 60 feet. Or 60 feet. So 60, six stories or 60 feet? Yes. Okay. A motion has been made and properly seconded to amend. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Thank you, colleagues. Is that it, Councilor Lally? Okay. Councilor uh, Rodriguez? Do we uh, have any special permit language we have to put in for this? Uh, the, uh, through the chair? Councilor Lally? Uh, for this, the special permit language does not need to change. Uh, there would be different special permit language should the committee choose to adopt the amendment suggested by Director May. Okay. Do we have the wording for Councilor Rodriguez for the amendment? Yep. So it would be for industrial zones, no structure shall be erected, reconstructed, or structurally altered to exceed in the height the limit herein after designated for the, for the industrial district in which the building is located except by special permit. Any permit granted herein shall not exceed 130 feet. Is that? That's the motion. That's the motion. Second. Motion's been made and properly seconded. All those in favor? Oops, all those opposed? Motion carries. So just a quick question for you, um, Director May. I know originally when you mentioned this, you stated the different buildings, accessory buildings and structures. You don't need to have any of that stated in this ordinance to make differentiate? Um, <clears throat> Pardon me, I believe your legislative council has uh, prepared that language in, in that it's taken in, into account in, your, in the language that you just voted on. Okay, I just want to make sure it's what yes. you wanted. Um, and I know Councilor Fowler asked um, Commissioner um, Cliff. Cliff if uh, he's, you're, you're all set with the language, everything you believe this is, this is going to work, Sorry. Commissioner. Madam Chair, yes, I do. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we've so, worked on the amendments. Now we need to vote on it as a 
um, Paul, correct? Recommend favorably. Okay. Motion. Uh, look, a motion to recommend favorably as amended. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to uh, recommend this ordinance favorably back to the full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? The ordinance passes favorably back to the full city council. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you, Council Alley. Thank you, Commissioner and Director. Madam Clerk, whenever you're ready, ordinance number two. Item number two, ordinance. An ordinance amending sections 23-133 through sections 23-139 relative to the storm water management ordinance. Invited to attend, Winthrop Farrell Jr., Counselor at Large, Shirley Azak, Ward 7 Counselor, Susan Acastro, Ward 4 Counselor, Mark D'Agostino, Ward 3 Counselor, Patrick Hill, DPW Commissioner, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Assistant City Solicitors, Allison Cogliano, and Kayla Benchkowskis, or designee of the Law Department. Thank you. First off, before we discuss this item, I want to publicly thank this committee. I was part of this committee, but I have to say that um, this committee worked really hard to do what's best for the residents, for the public, really to come together and fi try to find a solution. I think um, this is going to work, and what I'd like everybody to keep in mind is with our ordinances, any time that we feel there something needs to be corrected or um, you know reviewed, they could always come back to ordinance and we can take a look at them. But I do want to thank Councillor Fowell because he was kind of a cheerleader in this and really brought, um, you know, even though we were all concerned as a city council when we had the issues with the stormwater, he really took this and really um, was the head the head of it, I can say that. And thank you to Council President Nicastro as well and Councilor um, D'Agostino that were part of this committee as well as our department heads. So thank you um, very much. And now we can discuss it. Council Fowler. <clears throat> Just by way of summary, um, March 13th, I introduced this ordinance and the chair is quite correct. This, this really has been a team effort. I can't thank Commissioner Hill enough. Uh, Kayla, I, I won't attempt your name yet. I'm practicing. Uh, the finance office, Troy Claxon, Tiffany Ciasulo, uh, Council President, you, Madam Chair, Councilor D'Agostino, I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. Uh, this particular issue has been talked about a lot in the city, so what we've done, and in a minute I'll ask Legislative Council with your permission to, to read it, we have created a new ordinance by deleting the original ordinance, and the new ordinance will call for a different stormwater authority. It'll be chaired by the DPW commissioner in an ex officio capacity. There'll be five other members. One will be the conservation commission agent. The other one will be the chief financial officer. And then there'll be three residents who will serve on the stormwater authority to give citizen input into this particular matter. Uh, they will be charged with meeting, setting fees, which will ultimately have to be approved by us. And uh, we have specifically exempted single family homes. We have exempted owner occupied up to three family homes. We have exempted churches. We have exempted uh, cemeteries because there were very <laughs> difficult stories coming in, at least to this counselor, about tens of thousands of dollars being charged to cemeteries or thousands of dollars being charged to churches. <clears throat> what we will still do, and this is important, we still will fully comply with all of the rules and regulations that the EPA or the DPA imposes upon this city for stormwater. Uh, we will still be collecting some fee, although I don't know what it is, obviously from large commercial properties, which has impervious uh, coverings on their parking lots, but it is written into the ordinance, and I, and I want to read this because I think it's important, and actually this, we should do this for everything we do. Um, basically, it says that we will establish fees that are only intended to support stormwater management staffing and that the fee should be the lowest possible. 
because we're not in the business, government should not be in the business of trying to get as much as it can out of people. Have a budget, know what you have to do, collect the amount of fees that are necessary for that, and, and do no harm or, or mitigate any harm against people financially. So that's it. I, I look forward to any other discussion from colleagues, but I do have to thank Legislative Council and Kayla for their work on this. Uh, they've, they've really boiled this down to, a, to what I think is a wonderful ordinance for everyone involved. <clears throat> thank you. Councilors? Any other questions? No, no I actually have a comment. Do, do we want Attorney Resnick to read it? So, I, If she could, it, because there, there will have to be a series of motions, yes. Madam Chair, to, to get us from what I submitted to where we want to be. Okay. So sure. <clears throat> if she wants to proceed in that manner, with your permission, that's fine. Okay, Councilors, any questions before we, we ask Attorney Resnick to read the ordinance? No. Whenever you're well, ready. I, I'll have a, I mean, a comment of something that I'd like to see added to this thing as well. Do you, so you want, no, do you no, want to do well, that If she after? reads it first, okay. then we'll Do you want me to read all of the motions or just the ordinances? I mean, just the final version. Say the final version. Okay. Well, the final version would not apply unless we adopt the, the amendments, though, correct? So we probably should try to adopt the amendments, and then that, and then this final edit would, would yeah, control. Yeah, I think it's better to go section by section, because that's kind of how I have the <coughs> motions prepared. Um, so the first part that um, is being added in are two new definitions. And so what the um, purpose of adding in these definitions is because you'll see later on in the suggestions um, to provide um, exemptions for these um, categories. And so we are defining um, what types of properties would fall under to those exemptions. So um, before you would be a motion to amend to insert the following language. Um, it would be section 23-132 definitions shall be amended to include the following definitions. Dwelling unit, a structure or the part of a structure that is used as a home, resident, or sleeping place by one person who maintains a household or by two or more persons who maintain a common household. Places of worship, a building wherein the primary purpose is for persons to regularly assemble for religious worship and which is maintained and controlled by a religious body organized to sustain public worship, this includes churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, or other places of worship. I'd, I'd move that for an amendment. Second. Motion. Motion's been made and properly seconded to um, uh, accept the amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Um, the next is more of a just kind of a correction. Um, the, the, what was submitted to the council was to just do one brand new section and what uh, we worked on was just kind of organizing the section. So this next suggestion is just a kind of a structural change. Um, but it would be a motion to amend by striking the language again in what was submitted by Councillor Farrells in his March filing. In place of said section, the following new section 23-133 is inserted and inserting in its place the following language. In place of said sections, the following new sections are inserted. Mm -hmm. you, you want to read them? Or? No, that's just one part that's needed as a separate oh, motion. Uh, uh, so so moved. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded to accept the amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Um, and then this would be a motion to amend by st striking subsections 23-133A through J and inserting the following language in its original place. Um, and this is more substantive, so um, I'll read this section. A, Stormwater Authority, Authority is the agency established by this ordinance by the City of Brockton to oversee the proper execution of regulations contained in this article. The article is adopted under the authority granted by the Home Rule Amendment of the Massachusetts Constitution, the Home Rule Status, MGL Chapter 40, Section 21, MGL Chapter 43B, the regulations of the Federal Clean Water Act found at 40 CFR 122-34. B, there is hereby established a stormwater management authority, the authority composed of six members. The commissioner of the Department of Public Works shall be an ex officio non-voting member and chair of the authority. The remaining five members of the authority shall be as follows. The chief financial officer or their designee, the conservation commission agent, and three residents of the city. One resident shall be appointed by the mayor, 
and two residents shall be appointed by the city council president. Each resident shall be appointed for a term of one year and may be reappointed for successive years. C, the purpose of the authority shall be to ensure that property owners comply with the requirements laid out by the authority and the city of Brockton ordinances and to ensure the city complies with the requirements of the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, or any other regulatory agency having authority over stormwater management within the city. The authority in this city, city shall have the power to enforce all provisions contained herein and within the stormwater authority manual, as well as all regulations and orders pertaining to the management of stormwater. So that is um, basically what would be the new section, establishing the, the purpose, um, how we are creating it, and then the makeup of the new stormwater authority board. So, mo motion to strike the original language and insert the language as just offered. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to accept the amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Um, and then this would be a motion by inserting the following language as a new subsection. Section 23-134, Responsibility for Administration. A, the authority shall be required to publish a stormwater management guide. The guide shall contain summaries of regulations, policies, and requirements for the management of stormwater and for any permits issued by the authority. The contents of the guide shall be determined by a vote of the members. The guide shall be reviewed by the authority on an annual basis not later than April 15th and updated as needed. After approval by the authority, the requirements contained in the guide shall be effective for the following fiscal year beginning July 1st and incorporated by reference within this ordinance. The authority shall establish, section B, the authority shall establish fees relative to stormwater management for various types of properties. The fee schedule is intended only to support stormwater management staffing, operations, and mitigation. The following properties shall be exempted from fees. One, owner-occupied residential properties of not more than three dwelling units. Two, properties owned by the Brockton Housing Authority. Three, properties owned by places of worship and cemeteries. And four, properties owned by the City of Brockton. C, the fee schedule shall be submitted annually by the authority to the City Council not later than March 1st. The fee schedule shall be subject to City Council approval. The fee schedule shall be effective July 1st of the next fiscal year. D, the authority shall submit to the Mayor, Chief Financial Officer, and the City Council not later than March 1st the projected costs for stormwater management for the next fiscal year, including but not limited to staffing costs, operational expenses, expenses for consultants, and purchase of goods and services. Further, documentation shall be submitted for salary costs, which shall include job title, anticipated salary, job description, and minimum qualification for each position. Uh, motion to either amend or strike the original language and insert this language, yep. would that be proper? Motion to strike the original language and offer this amended language. On the motion, I just had a quick uh, question. On when we were, during one of our meetings, I had requested that we somehow don't, because Brockton Housing is an entity, if we could word it any other way, but that was never done. So I'm just, was there a reason or? I'm just wondering why that, why Brockton Housing is named as specifically as Bro Brockton Housing. I, and I just didn't want to have a problem down the line with that. I, I can only speak for myself, but I, I kind of viewed Brockton Housing Authority property, even though they're clearly independent and federally funded, but they are part of the city. I mean, we appoint people to the board, and I, I did not want I didn't want to run the risk of having stormwater fees that might be charged to the housing authority diminish their ability to operate and provide essential services to residents. I didn't want the, the expenditure for stormwater fees to erode their capability of elevator maintenance or upgrades to buildings or something like that. Uh, that but that was my thinking. Okay. I'm just, so how does that, I just don't want to see us have anybody question that down the line. I've 
and that was originally why I had brought it up. So what, how different would they be like from a Father Bills or a Bamsey or, um, you know, why, I mean. So, only that they're an adjunct of the city, whereas Father Bills would be an independent, private, nonprofit corporation. Okay. So that was just a question. I wanted to see if there was, I just had a question on that. Councilor uh, Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I also think that we ought to look into some uh, small business owned properties and come up with some way or, or a language in the sense that actually helps these struggling small businesses um, pay their bills because you've got somebody that might have an acre of land and they got one small building in the middle of it and now they're their sewer bill might be around, and I'm gonna give you an example. For instance, the association is one of them. Our sewer bill is around $78 because we only have two bathrooms and there's no showers, there's not, not with anything, it's whatever we use. But our sewer bill, I mean our stormwater bill is a lot more than that to a point with three times, four times higher than what we actually have in sewer. And I think that somehow it is a little on the unfair side for small, especially nonprofit organizations that are, you know, trying to make and try to do things here in this community. And I'm not just speaking for the association, I'm speaking for a variety of others that might be in that same situation. So uh, honestly, um, there's gotta be some way to basically uh, put some language in there that they're, that they're perhaps their bill should not exceed what they pay for the sewer which they're still paying something so that it's not, you know, it's not out of, you know, out of the way, because I, honestly, I don't think we should be paying, if our regular bill is no more than $78, that we should pay $180, $190 in sewer, in, in stormwater. That makes absolutely no sense to anybody. So there's gotta be some sort of a protection there for some of these small business owned organizations or whichever way it is, because technically it's owner occupied in a way because the, the organization owns the building. Uh, there's gotta be some sort of protection in there. I don't know exactly how we can actually ward that so that it doesn't exceed, uh, and, and that varies from time to time based on your sewer bill. But I don't think those, uh, we shouldn't be paid more than what we pay for sewer. Can I just comment on that? Yeah. So that this section <coughs> of the proposed ordinance provides an exemption, meaning that they will never have to pay for that fee. You're talking about a situation in which you want to structure a fee kind of cap that the small businesses would pay. And what that process looks like is when the stormwater authority is assembled, they will recommend a fee structure to the council, which the council has to approve. So I think that that aspect of it, of creating the fee structure of what they're going to pay and how you're gonna measure it is during the submission of the fee schedule that the council approves, not necessarily by the ordinance. Yeah, but, but the that other, is. But the other uh, exemptions are in the ordinance. But but you're suggesting that they not pay as much as sewer, so that suggests that they are paying something. These entities listed in the exemptions don't pay at all. So I hear what you're saying. Um, and I'm not saying that you can't do that, you certainly can. Um, I just think it's a different, it's not an exemption, what you're proposing, so it would be a different part of this section. But also that's the fee component that comes before the council through the new stormwater authority. Yeah, but my issue with this, now we're gonna put it in the hands of 11 people to vote on it. And if six people go one way with it and five stay on the other side, then it carries, correct? Well, point of information, it would be that case if we did it here too. Well, that's what I'm saying, but I, here at least I'm arguing on the, uh, on the ordinance uh, that we're putting together. Okay. Uh, once it gets to the next level, you lose that ability to argue that. And that's why I'm saying that we gotta look into something here that actually gives some protection to small organizations that are working in this community or small, businesses that are conducting their business in this community that we shouldn't settle them with uh, additional costs is when we're exempting a bunch of other ones. Uh, with all the, listen, I love the housing authority. 
but they they rent their properties. It's not like they, you know, their properties are free to, you know, the citizens of Brockton. I know some folks that are paying over a thousand dollars a month to the housing authority for rent because their income is a little bit higher than than most. So it's not it's not zero. So if it's not zero, and now we're basically telling someone who might be a owner occupied four unit property that by the way you're not exempt because you've got four units even though you live in one but you're not exempt but yet we're exempting some other ones that are doing exactly the same thing renting their pieces of properties as well so that's why i'm saying here that we got to come up with something in there that says they will look into this particular thing uh and and come up with some sort of a game plan to basically protect those those small businesses because i think Honestly, when you sit down and think about it, if you got a $78 bill, your stormwater should not be $180. Well, just, by the way, I don't disagree with a lot of what you said, but that's why this is written the way it is. By having three residents participate in creating policies and stormwater fees, by having the council have the final authority over fees, which we do now for water and sewer and refuse and, and uh, other fees that are charged in the city. And I also think, and I defer to Commissioner Hill, I think there's usually an appeal process. For example, if, a, if I could just ask him this question. Th Commissioner there please. is an appeal process now, which I would think would carry over to the next stormwater authority so that if someone felt that they received a bill that was completely outrageous, they'd be able to appeal it, am that, I right? Absolutely, yeah, they, they, they can request uh, relief and through the, like, almost like an abatement, um, but it, it's heard in front of the entire uh, authority and the authority can make the decision whether or not uh, exemptions are made. So, it, so, Council Rodriguez, if this were adopted as just outlined by legislative council, you're right, the buck would stop in our desk, but, but it stops there for all of the other fees. And so I, I think we've got a fail safe in an appeal process so that we don't put an onerous burden on a small business person. Because I agree with you, when you start a business, every dollar counts. It takes you sometimes years to get your foundation under you to, to be successful. But, but I think this will provide citizen input, appeal process, and council approval, and hopefully counselors will be very mindful, as you are, of helping out small businesses and not putting a burden on people. But, but uh, through you, Madam Chair, and to the counselor. But my problem is that now you have to rely on, on filing an appeal with the authority and having your appeal heard, not to exempt you from it, but basically to reduce what you pay? Well, to, I, I would say through the chair to you, depending upon the nature of the appeal to the authority, someone might might be exempted from any, any fees. I, I would leave that up to the individual discretion of the stormwater authority because it will be composed of residents and it will be composed of city officials. I, I mean, I, I, and I, obviously you want good people to serve in those positions who are sensitive to the issues that you're raising. But um, I think to try to carve out any type of a maximum fee would be to gut the, the responsibility that we want to entrust to the stormwater authority. That's my only uh, uncomfortable uh, feeling about doing that here. Attorney Rezek, I have a question. So it wouldn't be possible to add an amendment, like to amend this with what Council Rodriguez is suggesting? Yes, um, I would say just in a let that let that go through because you're not asking it to be an exemption it would be separate motion to do but um not to say it's not my place to agree or disagree but just to point out that when the fee schedule comes before the council it might have um, many more scenarios um small businesses maybe nonprofit organizations in the cities there could be a, a bunch of different um fee schedules that are proposed to the council through that um, but I, I think Councilor Farrell was correct in the scheduling of the fees is deferred to the authority. This would be the only, if you add that amendment, it would be the only part that you're telling the authority has to be part of their fee schedule. With all due respect, 
I've been living in this city for 40 something years. I know how things work when they go in front of a body in the sense. We see that happening in all the uh, regulatory bodies that we have in this city. You know that a nonprofit that has deep pockets will come around and say, I want to be exempted from this and because of their connections they will be exempt. Where some of the smaller ones will not be exempt. So that's what I'm trying to avoid because I think if you put it up to the authority to decide on that and you're basically giving them that authority. I think we'll see what happened because I can just see it now. You know, we had, we, t we had talked about a pilot program years ago for taxation in this community and some of the power um, nonprofits in the community decided that they weren't gonna do it and guess what, it never took place because the power nonprofit, $90 million nonprofit organizations in the community wouldn't pay, you know, $30,000 to the city in a pilot program. So. My whole thing is once this thing happens, the, these power organizations that actually have well-to-do pockets in a sense will come in front of that authority, make the case, get exempt where some smaller ones that need to, be, need to benefit from those particular um, uh, exemptions will not get it. So and I, I don't, I honestly, uh, because mark my word, we're going to come here next, uh, th this coming year when we're discussing this and you're going to see it. These exemptions will be in, this group is exempt, this group is exempt, this group is exempt. You know, where smaller, what I'm saying, some small organizations that own their own property whose bills are under a particular dollar should be exempt from it. You know, and some larger nonprofits that can actually afford to pay it, in some instances, will end up getting the exemptions and not the, and not the, other, not the other way around. And that's my fear, because I've seen that happen it happens in the zoning board, it happens in, in the planning board, it happens everywhere. It depends who you are, how well you're represented, and how well you can actually, you know, um, talk your way out of certain things in order to get that. So that's what I'm trying to avoid because then it's going to happen, you know, and the, the big organizations won't pay a dime and then the little ones that could actually uh, use those funds will not be able to get what they should get. So if you'd like for a specific property class to receive an exemption, the place would, to do that would be under what's in front of you as under B, and you'd have it as a five. If you'd like to add them to have like a set fee, like you said, not to exceed your sewer bill, um, then you'd add it as an E here. Yeah, because I like to see that so that, you know, hey, listen, if we're paying $70 worth of sewer, we're okay with paying $70 for the uh, stormwater but it should not be triple, four, you know, quadruple what we're paying because then it's up to us to come in front of that authority to basically every year argue that, argue that. And chances are the way things go by in this city sometimes, it will, it will not be exempt and some, some other folks will get exempt. I don't think we should give this authority, to be honest with you, that much leeway to decide on this. Because if we do, then it defeats the purpose of putting this thing together because there will be a bunch of exemptions and only certain groups or certain people will be paying their, uh, their stormwater. And that's what I would try to avoid because if you, leave, if you leave some open language in there, some open spaces, they will take advantage of it. Just, just, just a, a point of information, uh, Madam Chair. Sure. House will follow. Yeah, just, just a, I'll wait until later. Uh, point of inquiry. Through you, Madam Chair, to Council um, Just again, for my edification, do we have, when they complete their fee structure, do we have a final approval over that structure? Yes. We do. So they will come back to us and present us, hey, here's what we're going to do, here's what we're exempting, here's what we're not exempting. That comes back to us for a final vote. That's correct. Just, just as all the other fees in the city. Okay. So I tried to stay they're consistent through the chair, but they're not going to give us the uh, the breakdown of who's getting the exemption, who's not getting the exemption. Or if just if they ask, if we ask through the chair, if, if we say our vote is contingent upon you telling us exactly how this is broken down, I'm willing to make that a requirement. I, I as a matter of fact, I don't want to vote on it blind. I would want to see who's getting what, uh, and so we don't, you know, green light somebody like Brockton Hospital getting away with not paying a dime when, because Brockton Hospital famously refused to be involved in any pilot program when a lot of smaller organizations like the Cape Verdean Association stepped up. Um, 
I wouldn't want to green light a, a, a rate structure in which something like that went through. So I don't, I don't see the council passing it without wanting to know what's inside. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, you know, put our head down on it. But if we have final say, um, then I'm okay letting them, at least for year one, giving them the trust to try and forge their own path. Now, uh, Commissioner Hill, did you want to speak on this matter? Uh, yeah, I just want to say that I, uh, you know, after speaking with a solicitor, I may have misspoke too. Um, the waiver process was eliminated through the development of this new ordinance, so um, that may be something that you guys want to add if there's to be consideration of a waiver um, that's put in front of the council. But, but just a point of information, though, that, but the authority could on its own vote to create a waiver process, correct? Or an appeal process? Uh, I, th th that would be we're, a better we're basically, question for the... If we're entrusting them to, to uh, you know, set up the manual and set up regulations, I, I would think that they might have the authority, I, w I would defer to legislative council, they might have the authority to create a waiver or appeal process. Um, I could see why they would interpret that they don't have that authority because the existing stormwater authority language that we have in the books has a waiver process. Um, the proposal excludes that, but um, it's something that can be put back in and kept. Just as we go through this and then in response to uh, Council Rodriguez, I'm just concerned with what metric we would use if we were going to carve out an exemption for a small business or for some other, for some other entity. I mean, would we have to do means testing and look at tax returns? Would we, what would we use to judge whether they should or should not pay a stormwater fee and in what amount? That, that's what concerns me. That, that could be an administrative challenge. I, I agree, es especially the way that this whole um, fee was developed based on impervious area. So um, there's, there's really no way to kind of, in my mind anyway, um, divide that up and try to fa figure out a fee for specific people and I, I certainly don't think uh, the sewer, uh, having a, uh, comparing it to your sewer bill would be a good metric. So um, I, I, I think the waiver process should exist. I don't know if it existed uh, and it was established by the authority. My fear would be that uh, somebody would apply for a waiver and it would only come that, you know, in the April of that year uh, with the fee recommendations. So um, it, it may be worthwhile having a waiver process in the ordinance to be reviewed by the stormwater authority and then maybe um, have the stormwater authority report to the council um, when waivers are requested and approved. I just report waivers granted? Uh, just uh, uh, wa waivers granted, yeah. What, uh, if, if I could, Madam Chair, where would we insert that if we were going to do that, uh, Attorney uh, Resnick? As a subsection E to what's, um, what we're looking at here. And I can share with you, I did bring, Councilor Castro asked me to bring it, the existing ordinance and what there is. Um, that language for waivers and abatement um, has a little bit to do more with like project type management, not necessarily that fee. Um, but I could suggest language that grants the authority for the stormwater authority to review waivers of fees and abatement requests um, it says here, I guess, to be accompanied by an explanation or documentation supporting the waiver requests. I, I, I'd make that motion. I, I, think that's, I think that's perfectly reasonable to include that in the stormwater authority mandate to entertain waiver and, and abatement requests with a report to the council on such waivers and abatements that are granted? Okay, so the final approval will fall on the authority or will fall on the council for the and abatements, for the, for the waiver authority. process? The authority. The authority, okay. So I, I, I'll make that motion. Second. On, on the motion. Councilor Rodriguez. Again, I, I think we're giving this authority way too much power you know, to decide who pays, who doesn't pay based on the way it's presented. 
I think no one should be exempt from paying the fees. We, we are saying in this ordinance that we're gonna exempt some of those folks and the folks that we've, point, that we've said are going to get exempt are gonna get exempt, but everybody else should pay their fees. Because I think if we create this thing about allowing small, I mean allowing, I, I can just see it now, these large nonprofits in the community, if we give them the, the, the way to come in front of a body of five individuals, they will make their case and argument about all this great work they're doing to be exempt from this thing. And I don't think it's fair that smaller ones that are actually surviving on a day to day have to go to the same process that these larger ones, you, you mentioned Brockton Hospital. They'll come in here with their lawyers and everybody else in front of this authority and get exempted from that uh, stormwater because you're re relying on individuals both from the city and from the community that will actually grant them in some cases those exemptions. But I, I, I don't understand how, a, again, a small organization, a small business has to go on a yearly basis to basically say, I'm here to plea with you so I don't have to pay f uh, a full price on my, uh, on my stormwater. You know, that there's gotta be some way to kinda uh, basically carve that out and then basically say to everybody else, you know what, you're gonna pay your, your bill no matter how you look at it. You can afford to pay it, you should be able to pay it. So if we put, uh, perhaps a gross income line in there saying if you make over this much in terms of, uh, of your revenue, then you, 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 you could be exempt from, these thing, from this thing as well or actually going through some sort of a sub price or something that you pay. But there's gotta be something in there because I can just see, I, I have in mind about four uh, power nonprofits in this community that will be in front of that board as soon as the board sits, there's gonna be a, them in there with lawyers and, and basically saying, well, you exempted the housing authority when they rent places and we rent places and why aren't we exempt? You know, so that's what I'm trying to say, that that authority will come back and say, okay, fine, we're exempting you, and then it defeats the purpose of this. And then the little, one, the little guys are gonna get hurt, of it, you know, hurt by it. And that's why I think in here we ought to carve it out and say, no, 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 everybody's gonna pay their bill and then come up with some sort of a language that says, uh, if you make uh, over certain income or certain whatever, you're exempt. If not, then you pay your bill. You know, at least there's some protection in there for the little guys, you know, because the, otherwise it's just good for the big guys and that's the end of it. Uh, Madam Chair. On the motion, Council Paolo. Just, just uh, government is imperfect, Councilor Rodriguez. I, I agree with you, I, I mean, it's, it's Sometimes things do not shake out the way they should. But I would say to you that we entrust to five unelected people on the planning board to decide how parcels of land will be developed in the city. We entrust to five members of the Zoning Board of, of Appeals the decision making for variances and special permits. Uh, they're unelected. They are appointed and they're confirmed by us. Uh, the License Commission does the same thing. I mean, our government is set up, hopefully, with good people who have ethics and morality and integrity, and they will be fair and consistent and uniform in their application of laws, rules, and regulations. No, it doesn't happen all the time. I, I've lived in the city, uh, and, and I'm gonna pull rank on you. I'm older than you, so I remember back to the days when it depended upon who the attorney was or who the property owner was, which way a zoning board was going to vote. Fortunately, now we have a, a board that, that has integrity. But I think we need to give this a chance. I, I trust that we will have the appropriate people appointed uh, by the mayor and the, the council president. I trust that there will be enough guidance from the chief financial officer, the DPW commissioner, and, and if we're wrong, just as I regret to the day I voted for the original stormwater ordinance and I feel guilty about it, I would be the first one to admit it and entertain an amendment to this current ordinance that we're proposing. But, but I do think we should give it a chance to work. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Council Lally, on the motion. On the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely agree with Councilor Rodriguez that there's not, nothing, nothing as profitable as a good nonprofit. Uh, we've got 
Yeah, I, and I think I know exactly what four you're, you're thinking of. Um, and it, it is it is a shame because at some point, you know, nonprofits set out with the right intention, but some of them get big enough that they're just a taxless corporation. Um, but I, I think that in order for us to have a clean attempt at this, we have to let the new group try. Uh, if they come back to us with something that we are dissatisfied with, I hope we reject them, and I hope we make them come back again. If they, as, as Councillor Farwell said, you know, become a uh, sort of a disappointment, if they, if they don't, uh, if it doesn't play out as we would like it to, uh, I think at that point in time, the city council or members of it have to put their own group together uh, determine a proposed rate structure and implement it and give that board a lot less uh, authority. But I think that in order to, you know, to get there, we have to let this, we have to make the attempt. We have to, we have to actually try to, um, you know, let, let, them, let them try. If they fail, then we step in. But we do have to let them try. If we start editing little bits of it, then they didn't really have a fair run to begin with. If we say, okay, the, the floor is yours, you determine how you want to play this, except for this, that, and this, and the other thing, we've kind of taken a, a little bit of their agency out before they've even started, which I think weakens the future of the board. If there were a way to create a set of standards for a variance, I think that would, um, make a lot more sense. So while we create the variance, we create some set of, of standards. Uh, you know how the boards have the variances that require the proof of a hardship. Um, because if you're a group that's doing good work and you don't have a, you know, a lot to, lot to go off of and we're gonna punish you while Brockton Hospital or whoever else gets gets their bill cleaned out, that's, I don't want that. That's the exact opposite of, I think, what we're setting out to do. So if that variance, um, or if that, you know, appeal process uh, had some sort of hardship attached to it in a way that would keep some of the larger operations uh, at bay, I, I think that would provide some merit. Um, but I don't know exactly offhand how we would implement uh, that kind of standard, but I think that might resolve some of your concern. Um, but in, in short, I think that we have, to, we have to actually let the board make a go of it before we start um, manually adjusting things within it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Council. We do have a motion on the floor, and it was seconded, but I believe uh, Council Nicastro wanted to speak on this item. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I was very pleased to work on the working group that created this ordinance. I think it will help. And, Council Rodriguez, you may be right. I'm just sitting here trying to quantify in my head, the number of nonprofits that own real estate in the city. I, and, as, and, you know, of course, we're all aware of the larger ones. Um, I'm just not sure there's that many small ones. And, and that's what I would be interested to know because we're spending time on this and it's important that we do, but how many are we really talking about? Um, I don't have an answer, but I just throw that out to you. Maybe we try this and see. Because I, I don't want to exempt all of the nonprofits across the, across the board. They're already exempt from taxes. And this stormwater fee will actually do good. I mean, the whole reason we're doing it, it's being imposed on us, this, all these regulations by the EPA. But we need the funds to pay for um, what it's gonna cost us to implement this. And so I don't have an answer for you, but I just wonder how many are we really talking about? Because I know there are many that rent properties, but I'm just not sure, or, or are able to use real estate. I'm just not sure how many own properties. And of course, it would be the owner that this would be imposed on. 
So that's all I had. Thank you. Well, uh, through the chair, uh, Madam President, uh, the association that I was talking about owns its building. Yes, I know. You know, and the point that I brought up is the fact that we pay our sewer bill normally is around $75 because sure. we don't have that much usage of water down there. But our storm water is over 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there might be others that might be in the same situation. I don't know, but I'm speaking from this is a factual thing because I pay the bills and yes. I know exactly what we're paying. And I'm just saying that uh, I'm not against this. Let's make sure that we understand this. Yes. I'm against the way, the way it was done before that we all voted for. Mm -hmm. I'm not against this. I'm just saying that there's got to be a way to protect the little guys that are out there. I can see a couple um, small restaurants that are barely surviving. They've got a parking lot because they have to have a parking lot. Now, their bill is based on the size of their lot, not necessarily what they use for sewer. You know, And that's what my concern is versus an organization that's making millions and millions of dollars um, that could actually afford to pay what they're paying, what they should be paying, but where this small restaurant might not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I can see a few of them up and down Main Street. They own their place. You know, they've got a lot because we require these restaurants to have a parking lot. Now they're being punished because the more lots you have, the bigger your property is, and now you're paying, you're paying that. That's why I'm bringing this up. And I don't want to leave it up to an authority, to be honest with you, because you know what? I know it, it was said, Council Fowell said, you know, that we've got, you know, uh, residents who are on the planning board, on the zoning board, but a lot of their decisions do not, I don't agree with, you know, and to be honest with you, I see the issue coming up. I mean, I hate to bring it up, but how diverse is this group going to be? You know, that we're appointing to this authority that understands exactly what's going on. Is it going to be some folks who are retired who have time to, to sit down and do this, or is it going to be some folks that perhaps are vested in terms of businesses in this community that we need to put on this board? You know, because it's not like I have a vote who the person is going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have a choice in who that person is going to be. You know, so that's the, the fear that I have that this body will be put into play in place and it's going to go by the same thing that Council Farwell talked about in terms of the zoning back years and years ago, that it's going to be if we allow these folks to, to, to basically exempt some folks, you know, then we're running the risk of uh, that's how it's going to be totally unfair to the rest of us living in this community. So I would actually propose that we do not exempt anybody, you know, do not exempt anybody. And you see what happens, because if we put an exemption in there, it, it's, it's going to be put in there for the wrong reasons. And it will it'll benefit the wrong uh, groups. Yes. Because that's my fear, because mm -hmm. this body isn't going to, frankly, it's not going to look like me or sound like me. You know, I could just see that now. You know, so I'm not sure know, we got to be realistic. We got to be realistic because you got to go by on what your eyes tell you and you see throughout these boards and commissions that we have in this community. And it's a shame, but it's also true, you know, that they do not reflect this community. And I think the, the problems that we're going to have going forward is that some of these folks aren't going to be represented in those particular places to have their points, uh, their points brought and taken into consideration. That's my fear. Uh, your point's well noted, yes. Uh, it's my hope that we will get people that reflect the city and have the, the specific background to do this job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Could you refresh my memory as to the motion again? I, that, I was going to ask the same thing, <laughs> Attorney Resnick. So this motion just includes um, what is uh, establishing the Stormwater Authority, the, um, that they're going to create a guide, the four exemptions, um, which... I'm sorry, the amendment that council, the, that we yeah, just the appeal, voted... The, the appeal. And you added an E. Waiver. A, yeah. a a waiver. No, I don't think we should have that. Well, you haven't voted on the other part. Oh, too. so there was a motion and it was seconded, but it was to add. It was correct, add but on that prior language right. that I was just going through, that A through D, you haven't voted on that either. So this E would be more of a friendly amendment okay. on that you whole section. Okay, do a subsequent amendment. Correct. All right, then so we'll, we'll you vote withdraw on. your right. motion or. Uh, well, no, we ha we'll vote on the first block first and then add in E. Is that what you correct. want to do? Correct. Yep. Okay. So the, the first block again has those four exemptions. 
that the fee schedule shall be submitted annually by the authority to the city for city council approval. Um, and then they have to give like their budgeting information. That was the A through D. Yeah, okay. Okay, so is there a motion or? Motion to recommend favorably as, as amended. Oh. There would just be a motion to make that amendment. Make the amendment. This amendment, so this is the amendment. Yeah, motion, motion for that amendment. It. Second. A motion is made to accept this amendment. All those in favor? I'm not. I have a question. I know that it was two, and I actually, Councillor Rodriguez and myself. So you brought up and I something about not exempting anybody, and I think I would support that. I, I, I have an issue with exempting certain, I don't have a problem with residents, but I do have a problem with exempting a specific entity, and I think we're going to have a problem with it down the line. I, I really see a problem similar to Council Rodriguez. So, um, so it was two to two. I voted. Is that item two, you mean? Or? Yes, item two. I don't feel we should be exempting a specific entity because I know you stated that they really, the housing authority is not the city of Brockton. We have no say in anything they do, even though they have their own board. They, they're not the city of Brockton. They're their own but private they're entity. They're our appointee. Not, a, through, not the whole board. The only one that isn't. The governor's appointee. Point the majority, of the, right. unless so I'm have, wrong, the majority of the board is are all Brockton residents. I just, I know as a counselor, we have no say, we don't even know anything about anything that's happening at the housing authority. So, Councilor Lally. Uh, Madam Chair, to your statement about no exemptions, uh, we've got on the, on the amendment that just failed two to two, there are four listed exemptions. So, your suggestion is that, uh, none of these be exempt, including properties owned by the city of Brockton? No, that's not. No, that just, I, I don't have a problem with the residents. I don't have a, I know we have a problem with the. I, I would be willing to keep one and four if you want to strike yes. two and three. I, no, I want to, I want to keep three as well. So I have no problem with oh, one, three, and four. They don't pay taxes, are they? Yeah, but they're barely surviving. Well, That's because there's 500 of them. The cemetery. The, ce the reason why. Councilor, no, I'm talking about uh, Councilor Lally has the floor. Councilor All right. Well, yeah, that was that was my statement. I I mean, I'm not going to make that motion okay. if three stays in. That it's not going to end the world. Okay. Uh, but if somebody wants to strike housing authority, I understand. Councilor Fowler. I, I was going to say, in the spirit of compromise, rather than hold up progress. Um, if someone makes a motion to eliminate item two, properties owned by the Brockton Housing Authority, I can support that I, with the caveat that I just hope that whatever they pay doesn't diminish their ability to take care of other resident needs. But if someone makes that motion, I will support it because that's politics. Thank you, Councilor. Mm -hmm. Motion. Well, I'm gonna make a motion that we um, amend section 23-134 and strike uh, the number two of the four exempt categories from the from this order. I'll second that. A motion. That's, so just so I can be clear, that's the proposed language A through D, excluding what is property owned by Brockton Housing Authority. The number two, yeah. Yep, okay, I got it. A motion's been made and properly seconded to amend, all those in favor? All those opposed, the amendment passes. Now I'm gonna make a motion to recommend favorably and adopt the amendment. As amended. As amended. I have a, there were a few more. Okay. Oh. On this one? That's in here. No, so you're, uh, uh, we're still going amendment by amendment. Okay. Um, there's two more amendments that would bring um, the what you submitted in March, Councilor Farwell, to a full version that you can recommend favorably. Okay. The next two are really minor. So, uh, Councilor Rodriguez, did you want to add an, uh, a letter E with the waiver and abatement nope. request? Okay. Take that out. Okay. No waivers, no, no anything. Okay. okay. Um, then, the Councilor uh, <laughs> Attorney Resnick. 
<laughs> okay, so then the next um, is we had severability language in the prior version, this is just new version. Um, so section, the motion would be to amend by inserting the following language as a new subsection. Section 23-135, severability. The provisions of this ordinance are severable and if any provision, sentence, or paragraph is found to be invalid, this shall not affect the other provisions contained herein. Okay. Motion to adopt that language, strike the original language. Second. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded to accept this amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Madam and Chair. Council Lally. Um, we passed 23-134. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then um, uh, lastly would be a motion to amend by inserting the following language as a new subsection. Section 23-136 meetings. Meetings of the authority shall comply with the requirements of the open meeting law. No meeting shall be held prior to 6 p.m. on the date scheduled so as to accommodate attendance by residents and other interested persons except for the cases of an emergency meeting. Motion to adopt that second language. Motion has been made and properly seconded to accept this amendment. All those in favor? All those opposed? The amendment carries. Now we go back to 23134, which I would move to adopt, which excludes B2 properties owned by the Brockton Housing Authority. That's all set. We voted on it. I thought that was a two to two. Nope, Councillor Rodriguez remade a motion, Councillor Azak seconded it, okay. and that all got voted. Excellent. What would be needed next, if you're all done with your discussion, is a motion to recommend favorably as amended. Motion to recommend favorably as amended. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded to accept this ordinance as amended. All those in favor? All those opposed? The ordinance passes as amended back to the full city council. Thank you. I just want to thank everyone else again. Yes. Taylor, Commissioner, Mr. Claxon, Tiffany, Evan. I second that. Thank you all for being here this evening. We appreciate it. Ready for item number three? Okay. Item number three. Number three, ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 3, Division 2, Section 2 127, pay plan to establish pay plan provisions for the positions of DPW financial business manager and grant writer. Invited to attend Winthrop Farrell, Jr., Counselor at Large, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer, Patrick Hill, DPW Commissioner. Good evening, Mr. Clarkson. Good evening, Madam Chairman and Councillors. So we discussed uh, both of these positions during the, the budget season, but I'll recap that discussion and, and just highlight a little of uh, the reasons why we are requesting them. The request for the DPW business manager came as a result of the retirement uh, of uh, a position that was formerly called the contract manager for the um, water and sewer operational uh, contracts with Veolia. That person retired and Pat and I had some lengthy discussions and realized that what we really needed uh, was a position that was well beyond just the contract manager. The budget for the Department of Public Works along with its enterprise funds is larger than most small towns in Massachusetts. Uh, and the department has never really had a person to oversee the finances of that department. The grants that it processes uh, through Chapter 90, which can be in the millions of dollars per year. The various contracts, not only the water and sewer uh, oversight contracts with Veolia, but the, the, um, the contract at the desal plant with Aquaria the d literally dozens of other contracts for a whole variety of, of jobs. Uh, the materials contracts where the city purchases everything from salt to asphalt to valves for the water system. And so what we proposed and propose uh, was to use that money within the budget 
but just to use it uh, in a smarter and better way. So rather than a, uh, a position for roughly $100,000 a year that was simply overseeing the water and sewer plant, we bring that person into City Hall uh, and have them help Pat oversee all of the DPW uh, operations. We slotted the position in a way that's consistent with the pay ordinance that you revised. Uh, and so you'll see the position is consistent with the other uh, finance assistants, the assistant auditor, the assistant treasurer collector, the budget director, uh, and uh, the members of the board of assessors, the assistant HR director. And so we think that given uh, what we believe will be the responsibilities for that position, that's certainly an appropriate uh, place for it to be within the pay ordinance uh, and it's consistent with the money <coughs> That's, that's in the budget. Uh, so we, uh, we have not yet written a position description because we're frankly uh, waiting to see if the board, uh, if the, the, the committee approves us moving forward with the position. But I do think that uh, given the, uh, the, the level of, of work, uh, the scope of work, the challenges within the Department of Public Works uh, to, to manage some of the financial aspects we've seen. I mean, the, the, we've talked extensively about the stormwater billing, the work that you just did to revise the ordinance, uh, I know is due in part to uh, the issues that, uh, that were experienced with the stormwater billing. So I, this is not a panacea for all of those issues, but I can tell you many departments, uh, many public works departments of much smaller size in the Commonwealth have a similar position. The Department of Public Works where I live in Falmouth, which is uh, less than half the size of Brockton, has a similar position. So we thought this was the time to introduce that because we had uh, a, a, a person who retired in a position we ha have not yet and will not fill uh, because we think this is a smarter way to spend the money. Thank you, Mr. CFO. So quick question before um, the I open the floor to the councils. If I understood you correctly, one of these is replacing an existing position? Yes. And what was that position again? That position was the contract manager within, that was funded equally between the water and sewer enterprise funds. Okay, and can I ask who was in that position? Of course, yes, his name is, I was gonna say was, he's still with us, he just retired. Oh. His name was David Norton. Norton. David Norton, okay, so he retired? Yes. Okay. Thank you. You work new and one. Uh, Councilor Lally. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to start by saying I'm in support of this. Uh, the DPW, to use the mayor's language, does yeoman's work, uh, really keeping up the systems on which the rest of the city operates off of. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the department, and so anything we can do to, you know, sharpen them or assist them. I would be in favor of, uh, but something that I know we had a bit of a, a tripping hazard about with another position that we helped fund recently, um, the job description. So you said we didn't have descriptions because it didn't go through ordinance yet. Uh, would you be willing to, or would HR be willing to, if ordinance passes it, uh, before it reaches the full council, would uh, would everyone be okay having descriptions in place? Most certainly. I mean, we've done some research, and, and yeah. as I said, many other communities have this position, oh, yeah. and we've reached out, so we most certainly can have something for you for the full okay, council. Just, just before the final vote. Of course. Just so we have it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, Councillor? Councillor Fowler. This is a good move. It modernizes our approach to DPW operations. And you and I, I think, or at least I've talked with the commissioner, we really ought to do a, a study of the entire DPW Agreed. Yes. Uh, conglomerate because, I mean, it runs from highway to water to sewer to engineering to, to administration. And, I, and I'm not sure that we have the structure in place we need. This position, I think, will be very, very helpful to the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions? No. Okay. We'll entertain a motion. Oh, just a, oh, a Councilor Rodriguez. Is this position going to 
report to the DPW or because we had talked about where the grant writer might be uh, closely affiliated with your department in terms of day-to-day uh, -day supervision? How's that? How's that going to work? So, great question, Councillor. Thank you. And and I should mention this this ordinance change is all is not only for the DPW business manager, but for the the grant writer position as well. And I was going to address that in a minute. Uh, but for the administrative report, uh, we followed your lead uh, on the new financial analyst position that was created a couple of years ago, that was paid for partially by the Department of Public Works, and the guidance then from the council was because of the nature of the position was mostly financial, paid for uh, by the DPW, but supervised by finance. The proposal right now for this position is the same, but would work very closely, I would say jointly, uh, with finance and the Department of Public Works. Okay. I'm good. Uh, 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 just a quick word on the grant writer position. Yes. Uh, as you know, we re- uh, allocated, rededicated the priorities of one of the analysts in my office a little over a year ago. That's Paul Umano. And his work has been almost strictly dedicated to grants. In that time, uh, the city has received over $10 million uh, in grants. It was a collaborative effort. What we did when we redirected Paul's efforts, we established a committee that consists of the chief of staff, uh, Paul himself, City Planner Rob May, uh, Pat Hill, myself, and we meet twice a month and bring in other agencies and other folks uh, and have focused that activity. And so the mayor has uh, said that he'd like to have a more robust grant writing operation. I agree. Uh, so in the funding that uh, w supports the FY24 budget. If you remember in your budget book, it shows actually $300,000 in revenue from grants. We've not done a good job in the past here in uh, taking advantage of administrative reimbursement from a lot of those grants. So we believe that's conservative. We can do a lot more than that. Recently we received, uh, I don't think it's yet gone before the council, but we got a notice of award from the Department of Transportation for $7.8 million grant uh, for some work downtown. That alone can support that $300,000 in administrative support. Uh, but I think that uh, having another full-time grant writer is a good investment. It will allow us to focus even more. Uh, we do spend uh, uh, some money also in grants management. This will allow us to, uh, to do more of that in-house. So this too, I believe, is money well spent, and uh, I would ask that you support it. Thank you, um, Mr. CFO. Any other questions? Councilors will entertain a motion. Motion recommend favorably. Second. A motion has been made and properly seconded to uh, recommend favorably back to the full city council. All those in favor? All those opposed? The ordinance passes favorably back to the full city council. Thank you very much. Madam Chair. Uh, council Lally. I'd like to make a motion to take items number four and five collectively. Second. Motion has been made and properly second. Take items four oh, and five. I was going to make a motion on the table. <laughs> well, now you can do that. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Well, read them. We have to vote. Hold on. All those in favor of taking them collectively? All those opposed? If we just read them. Do you want to read them, uh, Attorney Resnick? Number four, ordinance. An ordinance creating a Department of Immigration Services within the City of Brockton. Invited to attend, Moses Rodriguez, Councilor at Large, David Texer, Councilor at Large, Mayor Robert Sullivan, or designee, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Number five, ordinance. An ordinance amending Article 3, Division 2, Section 2 127, Pay Plan, to establish pay plan provisions for the positions of Immigration Services Director and Immigration Services Liaison. Invited to attend, Moses Rodriguez, Councilor at Large, David Texer, Councilor at Large, Mayor Robert Sullivan, or designee, Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Councilors, Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, Madam Chair, um, as this issue has been, um, I believe, resolved by the creation of a position within the Mayor's Office at this time, I'd like to make a motion that we table both uh, number four and number five uh, so that uh, it can get out of the books and we don't have to uh, worry about this as we go forward. Second. A motion has been made to table these items. All those in favor? 
All those opposed, they are tabled. If there's no further business before us this evening, I will entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Amen. A motion has been made um, to adjourn. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Thank you.